it's uh, definitely a map that can, once again, be good for either player, honestly. This used to be like heralded as like the Broodlord Infester map for a long time, back when it was Aklon Flats. Then, of course, now uh, the Wastes oh, version yeah. is a little bit better for Teach Tanks and Mech to play out on. Forgot it was called Aklon Flats. Yeah, that was when they had like. F do you remember when they had four watchtowers on this map? Yeah, I do. Oh one God. of them, and then they made one of them destruct, like after a while. Yeah. Yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Before we even do map introductions, so I can, uh, I just I want to thank you guys for tuning in. Really, this is a show match series that we put on, and your viewership is greatly appreciated, etc. But I just want to point out, we were so close to breaking the channel record in that last game. So do share this with your friends. Go on Twitter. Tell somebody to come watch this. Really, just absolutely abusive showmatch series i think it was like something close to 8700 is the most viewers we've ever had on the channel period it was for iem if we could break that that would be just absolutely insane but not at all a goal we have for today we just want to watch some really good starcraft and uh, of course that's what we're going to get this is the prepare to die edition show match of the money peak series i'm rifkin joined today by zombie grub and spawning in the top left corner of the map he's green he's staring let's do the kung fu noises again hua, hua, hua. it's gonna be a velo and in the bottom right, as the red zerg, it is fire cake. And for those who are unaware why I'm making these silly noises, uh, do tune into a viewless stream. Like I said, love him, hate him, mech, zerg, it doesn't matter. Like, the guy's a funny streamer, he's entertaining, and it's part of why he's a pretty popular StarCraft 2 streamer. And one of my favorite things is his kind of like, I don't know if it's trademark, but his very well known, like, kung fu he does after he wins games. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, Firekick actually come with a drone scout this time. I'm a little curious about the thought process on this. Well, Avello is um, kind of known for like, I mean, he's well known for being a mech player and like, you know, having those long drawn out games, but he's also, you know, his other way of playing is like a T-Rex. <laughs> oh yeah, that was that so, Habitation Station game. <laughs> so yeah, um, so I, I, I do like the fact that it's the last game. It would be a huge mix up, like change up for a Velo to really catch Fire Kick off guard to do a two racks. So go ahead and just do the drone scout. Drone well, scout. not to be nitpicky, but we should probably call it potentially the last game. I mean, I'll, I think a lot of people came into the series expecting a 4 0 for Fire Kick to begin with, but uh, just hoping to get some really fun games out of it nonetheless. And so far, I think it's lived up to those expectations. But, uh, you know, the, the, the audience I feel bad for is the Protoss audience. Who comes to watch and they're like, I don't understand anything that's happening. Just like screw both of these races. Like <laughs> Mech versus uh, Zerg is very uh, an acquired taste, I think. It's the same crowd of people who enjoy TVTs that love these abusive sort of matchups. TVTs are fantastic. What are you talking about? They are, they're amazing, but they also can sometimes be like those sort of like really long tank versus tank, how do I move type games. No man, no man. TVT is my favorite, hands down. Like, I don't know. Part of why I think I... the hate on TVT really went away when Terran stopped populating GSL. <laughs> then it was all like, like, it used to be like, oh, TVT, no, and then it was like, uh, TVT's kind of good, and now it's like, TVT's one of the best. So, by that logic, then it's going to be PvP that becomes hated the most. <laughs> uh, that's already a fact. Yeah, I know, I know. Or am I? <laughs> Well, uh, one thing here actually worth noting, guys. So again, we're, we're talking about this map being a bit of a throwback. All the maps in the map pool today were just kind of these like really stupid. We tried to pick maps that would be incredibly abusive for both Zerg and Terran players. It is worth noting we've been playing today on the uh, European server, and or sorry, we're not playing on the European server. We're playing on the North American server. So Firecake, I'm surprised he's uh, like it, it's not surprising that he's been winning per se. But like when you've got a little bit of delay, because I don't know a single European player that says, "Boy, I love to play in North America because it's got no delay." I'm surprised like between the the micro intensive units like Vipers and what have you, he's been able to put on such a great show. It's a good point, but uh, you know it's actually been a Villo lagging out whoa, whoa, whoa. at least a few times. Yeah, Baneling Ness is on the way, so is he gonna pretty bust early Velo? Baneling busts. I like this. I like it a lot. <laughs> If the wall up was up for Velo, I talked about this in that very first game or whatever on Gravesite. No, was Gravesite? I can't remember. Anyways, earlier today, where it's like his wall comes down late at the natural and it's going to come down late once again. Uh, this is not going to. Uh, this is actually going to be really dangerous for Velo. And his bunker's off placement by one, so he's going to have that weird hole in the wall again. I'm actually. Well, you know what? We're expecting this crazy long game for the last one, but that might not be it. Six Baileys we morphed in outside of his base. Even if the supply depot was done, it wouldn't have mattered. The thing is, is that Firekick notices that Avillo 
I'm uh, well, in the last game he didn't, but he's he's not really the type to get a lot of units in the beginning, right? It's like a few Hellions and that's oh, God, it, and not this. a lot of scouting either, although this just scouted everything. And the Bill's gonna be saying, oh my god, probably Bill. Uh, Hellions coming in are kind of an interesting choice, but they're not, even with perfect micro, they're gonna be hard to deal with this. Banley's on the front lines, will take out that reactor, but now it's just Zerglings versus Hellings. If he gets these into the middle line and surrounds them with the SCVs, then he can hold this no problem. But there's one Banley left, and uh, one Banley's not that scary. More Banley's gonna be flooding in, he needs to replace this wall, or this could all be over in just an instant, guys. A lot of SCVs are going down, but keep in mind that Firekick didn't get any SCVs or any drones, so it's still only 21 to 18, definitely recoverable for Avillo. Firekick is not done, however. The second one, probably the most strong, especially if you're able to take down those Hellions, although the Hellions are still it's... alive, but with no wall off. I mean, the Banelings are going to be able to connect with any SCVs if he controls it right, uh, while the Lings deal with the Hellions. I think there's just too many Lings for these. It's funny on the ramp's going to be his only choice, but... Uh, doesn't quite get the engagement on the ramp that he wants to. Now at least you can try and get us around on the Hellions. Whoa! <laughs> Dancing very precociously here is Avila. We get to the mineral lines once again. This time though, there's Banley's coming and oh, grouping those God. SCVs isn't gonna cut it. Monster kill! This huge well, SCV hit goes off and looks like Avila's gonna lose so much of what he has available. Unfortunately, the last few units go down. Good job, I guess, is called. Yeah, a bit of an abrupt ending to this series, but... Firekick ends up taking the end 4-0 as predicted by many. Congratulations to him. Let's not forget, uh, big love goes out to Avila for playing today. His, uh, yeah. his performance wasn't bad by any means. Like, it sucks because the score doesn't really reflect that, but not to, not to, like, cater towards Avila or anything. He doesn't need us to make excuses for him. He had good games, but unfortunately in the end, uh, it looks like the better player did prevail. Now, that's not it. We're not completely done yet, guys. What we're gonna do is I'll, I'll uh, get some ads running here to end this. I gotta get the straw poll up. If you wanna vote on which player you thought had a better play today, I mean, it, it, it doesn't matter who won. Whoever you guys was your favorite, this is absolutely a popularity vote. This is where an, an additional $40 goes. Avilo definitely had the most resources lost in a single series, so he will get the $25 bounty, so walks away today with a bare minimum of $75. Uh, Fire Cake, of course, gets $150, and we'll see who can lock down that last 40. So, uh, don't go anywhere. I'll get the straw pull up and link it in chats. We'll be back in a sec. <laughs>